Here at Android Authority, we've had the Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, and S24 Ultra in our hands for the past couple of weeks. And one of the first things we've done is run all three phones through our panoply of tests to see how well they perform against each other, against the competition, and against some of the Galaxy S phones that came before them. So let's dive in. First, in this video, I will focus on the Snapdragon version of all three phones, so the one that you can find in the US, Canada, China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan for the Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus. The Ultra has a Snapdragon everywhere. I'll start with the easiest test we run, charging. To fully understand how a device charges and how quickly, we record the phone's battery level from 2% or below up to 100%. We also log the reported internal temperature of the phone and the level of power arriving at the phone over USB-C. We compile this data together so we can not only see how quickly a phone charges, but also whether peak power levels are sustainable and if the charging temperature is likely to affect long-term battery health. First, we compare the Galaxy S24 Ultra against the base S24. The Ultra has a bigger battery, but it also supports charging at faster powers and speeds. There wasn't a huge difference here. Both phones take a little more than an hour to fully charge, with the S24 Ultra taking a little less, 10 minutes less approximately. Also, check the dashed line. The Ultra pulls in much higher power, around 44 watts to begin with, but it drops to 33 watts around the 10 minute mark. And both phones settle to a lower power draw around the 30 minute mark. This is obviously done to avoid overheating. Look at the dotted line. The S24 Ultra goes up to 39 degrees Celsius, while the base S24 remains around 5 degrees colder throughout the entire test. Overall, it's nice to know that even though the S24 supposedly charges slower, it isn't really that slow. We also compared the S24 Ultra against last year S23 Ultra. We didn't expect much of a difference here because the two phones basically have the same battery and charging specs, and the results show that. The S24 Ultra charges a little faster, but it also draws a little bit more power from the charger and remains a few degrees warmer throughout the test. And then we compared the Galaxy S24 Ultra against the competition, the Pixel 8 Pro and the phone that charges really fast, the OnePlus 12. OnePlus claims it can go up to 100 watts in charging thanks to SuperVoop, so we were curious to see how the S24 Ultra stacks up. The Pixel 8 Pro was the slowest of the bunch, obviously, because of its slower maximum charging power of 30 watts. It did sustain that, though, for 20 minutes, which helped it kind of not lag too much behind the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The S24 Ultra took 15 minutes less than the Pixel 8 Pro to charge, but the clear speedy Gonzalez of that test was the OnePlus 12, which went from 0% to 100% battery in 28 minutes. And that's even without reaching the maximum charging power of 100 watts that OnePlus claims. And finally, we looked at the base Galaxy S24 against the base Pixel 8. Despite having a larger battery, the Pixel 8 only took 6 extra minutes to fully charge, but that's mostly because it was drawing more power from the charger throughout the test. I think we can say that the Galaxy S24 series charging speed is a little improvement over the Galaxy S23 series. It's also better than the Pixel 8 series, but it doesn't come anywhere close to the OnePlus 12 and the Oppo Find X7 series, which have super VOOC charging. Let's move to battery life now. In order to test battery life, we automate a series of everyday tasks on the phone, and we measure how long it takes for every task to drain the battery by 7%, then we extrapolate that to 100%. Our tests include camera and video capture, local 4K video playback, web browsing, a Zoom call, and gaming. To ensure a consistent test across multiple devices, we calibrate the display to a typical daytime viewing brightness of 300 nits. We keep Wi-Fi and data on, but we turn off Bluetooth and GPS to avoid these uncontrollable variables. As I mentioned earlier, we're only looking at the Snapdragon version of these three phones, so they basically have the same processor. And that's why we expected the Galaxy S24 Ultra, with its 25% larger battery, to last longer than the baby S24. 24. It only makes sense. And that's basically what happened in our tests. The S24 Ultra was anywhere between 10% and 48% better than the Galaxy S24, except when snapping photos with the camera where it lasted a little bit less. We think this is due to the Galaxy S24 Ultra's more complex camera setup. Now compared to last year, the Galaxy S24 Ultra has the same battery but an upgraded chip. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 promises 20% efficiency gains over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But does that really hold up? In our tests, yes, we noticed that the Galaxy S24 Ultra was lasting more than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. The biggest difference we noticed was in 4K video playback. The S24 Ultra can play a local 4K video file for 24 
hours. But then once again, the S24 Ultra lasted a little bit less for photography. And now we get to the meat of the matter. Everyone says the Galaxy S24 Ultra has some of the best battery life among Android phones. But is that really true? Aside from the camera where the Galaxy S24 Ultra once again drains a little bit faster, the phone outlasts the Pixel 8 Pro in everything and specifically in browsing and video playback. Next, we compared the smaller Galaxy S24 with the base Pixel 8, which has a 14% larger battery. And the results in general supported this. The Pixel 8 does better with zoom calls, photography, and gaming, but lagged a bit behind for 4K playback. If you ask me, the Galaxy S24 series just wins for battery life, specifically the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I've been daily driving Pixel phones since the Pixel 2 XL, so I'm kind of used to average battery life. And the Galaxy S24 Ultra blew my socks off. Okay, now we get to the more complex tests, benchmarks. We run a series of benchmark tests on every single phone that comes across the Android Authority desk. These include Geekbench 6 to measure CPU performance, PC Mark Work 3 to see how well the phones handle office and productivity tasks, and several 3D Mark tests to look at GPU performance. First, we looked at all three phones in the Galaxy S24 series. All three phones have the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy processor, so we kind of expected them to perform the same way across the board. And that was true for the Geekbench CPU test, the PC Mark Work 3, and 3D Mark GPU test. We also ran the 3D Mark test repeatedly over multiple cycles, which is what we call stress testing, and we noticed that the regular S24 handled that a little worse than the others, especially for the solar-based stress test. We think this is due to the slightly worse heat dissipation on the phone. It's also interesting to note that the Galaxy S24 Plus was a bit more stable and handles stress a little bit better than the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now let's see how well the Ultra has improved over the last couple of years. And as expected, we're getting year-over-year -year gains across the board for the CPU, productivity, and GPU. With stress tests, the Galaxy S24 Ultra starts with higher scores and then remains better across multiple rounds. Things get a lot more interesting when we compare the Galaxy S24 to its competition. We looked at the S24 Ultra compared to the Google Pixel 8 Pro, which runs Google's Tensor G3 chip, the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max with the A17 Pro chip, and the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro running the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but we were running it and testing it in X mode. X mode is Asus's ultra performance gaming mode, which, according to the company, improves hardware efficiency, removes background processes, and releases memory to optimize the gaming experience. Looking at the results as a whole, a few conclusions become very clear to us. I have to admit that my favorite phone, the Google Pixel 8 Pro with the Tensor G3, just isn't up to snuff. The Pixel 8 Pro gets consistently lower scores than everything else. But what's interesting to us is the Galaxy S24 Ultra, and with the CPU test, it does a little worse than the iPhone phone and a little better than the ROG phone. It gains back on the iPhone with the GPU testing and stress testing, but all phones do not hold a candle to the ROG Phone 8 Pro when it comes to GPU stress tests. With X mode enabled, the ROG is able to sustain its performance levels across multiple runs in the wildlife stress test, the wildlife extreme stress test, and the solar based stress test. This comes at the price of battery and heating though. With X mode, the ROG's battery drains a lot faster and the phone goes up to a hand blistering 55 degrees Celsius and averages around 44 degrees throughout the entire stress test, whereas the other phones only go up to 43 degrees and average somewhere between 37 and 39. X mode basically shows us what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can do flat out when it goes all guns blazing, but it's clear that Samsung and virtually everyone else, including Asus on the ROG phone with the default mode, have to rein the chip in in order to stop it from just going up in flames. Overall, you're getting a solid performance with the Galaxy S24 Ultra without burning your hands, which we can all agree is important. But if you want a phone that blows away all of the benchmark numbers, you might want to look at the ROG Phone 8 Pro and the X mode. Let's end this video with a comparison of the base Galaxy S24 against its competition. We looked at the Pixel 8, the iPhone 15, and the OnePlus 12. It performs better than all three phones across the multi-core CPU test and is almost as good as the iPhone 15's A16 Bionic chip in the single-core test. It also obliterates the OnePlus 12 and the Pixel 8 in the PC Mark Work 3 productivity test, and it matches the OnePlus 12 in all of the GPU tests while also performing better than the iPhone 15. It does lose out a little bit to the OnePlus 12 in stress tests though. The regular S24 drops in performance with every passing cycle, while the OnePlus 12 goes up and down and up and down between cycles. OnePlus's advantage becomes a lot clearer to us when we focus on the solar bay ray tracing stress test. 
This phone is more resistant to stress and maintains a higher score than the Galaxy S24 throughout, despite running basically the same chip on paper. We think that that's due to the OnePlus 12's dual vapor chambers. These chambers are sandwiched around the Snapdragon chip and they help dissipate heat and vapor and keep the phone running cool and smooth even under intense conditions. The OnePlus 12 remained cooler than the Galaxy S24 in all stress tests. It always recorded lower peak temperatures and lower average temperatures, so this phone can handle intense gaming sessions like a champ. After running all of these tests, I can objectively say that the Galaxy S24 phones are good phones. <laughs> no, seriously, all three phones performed very well and very similarly in most of our tests. And they were generally as good or even better than the Galaxy S23 series and most of their competition. But I think the one thing I personally learned firsthand is just how average the Pixel 8 series is in comparison. While the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro almost match up with the S24 and the S24 Ultra in charging tests, they don't come anywhere close for battery life and performance. And I've noticed this in the real world too. The S24 Ultra is genuinely faster and snappier than my Pixel 8 Pro, no matter what I'm doing on it. But it's also $300 more expensive than the Pixel 8 Pro, while the regular S24 is $200 more than the base Pixel 8. So it'll depend on what you're willing to pay and what kind of performance you're expecting. Would you pay more to get the Galaxy S24 with its stellar performance or are you okay with the Pixel 8 as long as you're getting Google's full suit of camera and software experiences? And would you make other compromises and get the OnePlus 12 instead or are you team iPhone all the way? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to follow Android Authority for all the latest news, reviews, features and more.